can sometimes talk in terms that even I find challenging to grasp. So to claim that a guy can't do engineering on platonic solids and come up with something new, the Rubik's Cube, the Haberman's switch pitch, uh, these things prove that that's not true. I think it's a foolish thing almost always to pretend there's nothing new under the sun. You well, should always consider it. Well, the it might not be correct, like but there's only one way to find well, out. Terence has much greater odds of contributing to the world of engineering than he does to the world of mathematics. I mean, the odds that he's doing something new in mathematics, I'll be blunt, are very, very small. Even though I have patents on it that shows that all of this is I novelty. don't want to go there. The patents do not speak to what you think that they speak to. When you say supersymmetry, I don't know that you know what a supersymmetry is. What does supersymmetry mean to you, Terrence? Supersymmetry means that all things come together, fit together, relate to each other. They are self-referential, and they are from a fractal that comes back to that same fractal space. What you mean is a symmetry that is amped up, but supersymmetry is a reserved term that means something hyper-particular. What is wrong with the term supersymmetry? Then I want to see an algebra, which is a linear vector space which has an object called a bracket, and I want to see that that bracket obeys a super Jacobi identity. And otherwise, there's no supersymmetry. But so it's it, a specifically used scientific term. It's a reserved it term of art. Yeah, but it's, it's geometry is its own proof. Supersymmetry and geometry so he, allows you to, to visualize, like you look at the ocean and you see the supersymmetry associated with it. I think what he's saying is you're talking about a thing and you're using the term supersymmetry, and he's saying that supersymmetry only applies to a very specific thing. I think he's disagreeing that term you're that you're using. You're using a reserved term of art, okay. and you're using it incorrectly. That's and, what he's saying. And you're going to pay a penalty. In yeah. Okay, I don't want to pay no penalty. Like, this is a thing where, taxes. like, if I'm watching a, an MMA fight and someone doing commentary and they call a kick wrong I'm right like, why are you doing this you don't even know what you're, you don't even know what that is like you you incorrectly reference something that's very specific that we've been talking about for a long time if you're getting intimate with your lady and you're into rough play and she's not wearing any clothes is it a rear naked choke if she grabs you from behind no a rear naked choke is a particular move Yes. It doesn't have anything particular. to do with what she did. In the world of <laughs> physics, in the world of yeah. mathematics, is there a super symmetrical system, geometric system, ever been produced in mathematics? Yes. In mathematics, yes. What We've is never it? seen super... What, what super su Poincaré algebra. That's not volumetrically. That doesn't scale up. Terrence, you have an entire way of thinking that is completely foreign to everyone that I know. What I'm trying to say is, the reason that science works as well as it does, there were clear rules, cultures, we agreed to leave certain things that are at the door, like our religious beliefs. We agreed to submit to certain sorts of things. We were decent to each other. And that system is in a process of collapse. Terrence comes from an earlier way of thinking, when things were much more wide open. You don't find many polymaths anywhere in a respectable position anymore. Terence is coming from a polymathic perspective. He's all over the map in terms of the quality of his thinking. As, it, as far as I understand, some of his stuff is really, really good. Some of his stuff is offensive. And it's everything in between. Let's get back to what I was saying about having, if my pieces naturally come together and form those same they do structure. They do don't. Well, here... Here we have... Where, How do they not, Eric? Here's, well, I'm going to show them. Here's where 12 bubbles meet. If you go to the yellow one right there, um, Jamie, please tap on that. This is where the negative space where 12 bubbles meet. I call this the Aubrian. I named it after my older daughter. Okay. You can take a look at it and how it behaves. So when I put 10 of them together, they look like this. Yeah. I put 20 of them together... They make a natural icosahedron without breaking any rules. Here's the light unit. If you'll go back to the green, this is where 20, where I've put 20 of them together the same way I put 20 of these together, and it makes a natural dodecahedron. But what it's showing you is where electricity is being pushed into the center, and you'll see these magnetic waves coming yeah. out. It's showing you the magnetic field. So these predict and create a natural dodecahedron, whereas these 
come together and create a natural icosahedron. That's not something that just happens by accident. My point is that you can run into all kinds of terms of art in a field that you don't know well. I come on your show and I do this thing, which I've never really discussed why I do it. I have this feeling that somehow Sean Carroll, 15 years ago, started talking about a suite of ideas like entanglement, the multiverse, these Boltzmann brains, whatever. And people have been talking about them ever since because it was a very successful tour. Much of the coolest stuff in mathematics and physics that's completely established, that's non-speculative, is not discussed. And I don't know why. Terence is bringing cool stuff from the world of geometry. It's a proof, effectively, that people don't know where it's coming from. A lot of this is real as geometry. He, if you look at the thing that he calls the Tarentin, right? The you, tetri, what the, te, the, 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 the Tetrian is the... The Tetrian. The Tetrian okay, is just so the So the tetri. Tetrian that is the thing that is closest yeah. to us, the black thing that is closest to us. Yeah, he yeah. then starts to make noises about it. And he says things that I don't love, which are that those faces he associates with the electric field and the vertices, I don't have a clue why, why he saying. says the next thing, which is... And because the number of, of magnetic and the number of electric things are balanced, they cancel out, and therefore it's the weak force. And to me, it's just like super cool stuff, and then suddenly turns into horseshit. But listen, why? Here okay. we have this, those two tetrians on the end. They share, they both have equal poles, four electric poles and four magnetic poles, according to how I see it, that where magnetism is spinning off of the tips, the vortices, because it's no longer able to maintain that center space of spinning spinning I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Yeah, what, what brought you to that conclusion? With what? The, the way you're d describing the energy involved in this. Well, anytime you look at electricity, that was one of the things that, that Victor Schauberger was talking about. Electricity is it's when water starts to spin to the right, it cools down. That's the natural nature of electricity. Electricity is colder. It, it flows better in the coldest environment. So those as it's cooling down, as it's spinning down to a higher point, trying to get to that higher point, that's the highest point there. It's looking for the highest density. That's the north. North is always the highest density. South, no matter where you are, south is always away from the higher point when you're talking about universally, not talking about geographically on the earth. North is always seeking a higher position. South is always seeking a lower position. That's based upon stuff that Walter Russell talked about, based upon the stuff that, that Victor Schauberger talked about. But it's We're, a but problem with the, de the definition of the words, the terms. What brings you to this definitive conclusion that you can so clearly state that this is what's happening there? Well, based upon any time there's an electric force ha acting on something, it causes a cavity. Electricity is always pulling in from the inside. It's always trying to tighten the density. And you assume this energy exists in the flower of life. Why? Because that's where all those, all those circles, the overlapping circles, they represent the magnetic field. They represent the radiative field that's why? coming out and coming back. Well, how, why does a bubble take the shape of a ball? Why not a square or a triangle? What's the part? What, why does it expand a bubble, into a sphere? A sphere is an abstraction that it's going to be the solution to many different problems. If I ask you to give me the maximum possible volume with the minimum possible area, I'm going to get a sphere. If I ask you what, what is the best thing to launch out of a, uh, an old style cannon and to stack next to it, you're going to say a sphere. Then you have a question about is that the same concept of a sphere? You know, if I take the three-dimensional sphere of unit quaternions, is that the same concept of a sphere? You are, in part, freely associating, repeatedly, between things that remind you of other things. Now, you have an incredible storehouse of things between your ears that you know to associate with. If you think about the totality of your brain, it's like a Ferrari engine and a Volkswagen. The Volkswagen chassis is not capable of supporting something else that you're doing really well. People who see many connections are often bad at cleaning up their own stuff. And people who don't see connections are often very rigorous and they don't do shit for their entire life.